I don't know who said that, but my maths teacher used to say that to me just before he used to hit me with a ruler. Okay, Mark. In the beginning, apparently, there was light, or there was the word. Which was it? Well, you're told it was the word. Mm -hmm. But uh, what does that mean? Hey, I don't know. Uh, I've always interpreted that. Well, I didn't interpret it. I wonder what it meant. But sound, that's what it means. But sound is light, so it's all one and the same thing, really. So, it, right, so it's all one and the same thing. Did you know it's being recorded in um, physics labs? I can't quote the detail. I'd have to check into it. But where sound has actually been verified to travel faster than the speed of light, okay. it's actually been kind of proven. Uh, which is causing a bit of an uproar because it shouldn't go faster than light and nothing should. Um, but it's a special type of sound nevertheless. Yeah, I think that's what the word was and it was light. So if in fact in the beginning there was light sound, is that then therefore creation, the building block of creation to start off with? Crikey. Um, were you expecting to interview Jesus today? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> God is present, yeah. Um, I think the best I can do is Elijah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. The Can you repeat the question? Because it's, it's So like, if, 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 if that then, you know, sound was word and in, at the beginning there was light, mm -hmm. um, is that then the building block for creation? Because that's what people are basically saying. In, in, you know, at first there was the sound, God gave us the word and have formed that. Yeah. Oh, God. I mean, this, this, this is heavy philosophy, but the way I see it, just trying to formulate the words now, is no. <laughs> no. Um, everything is kind of quantized in, in nature, so well, that's their best observation, hence quantum theory. Mm -hmm. So that Planck length, whatever that wavelength is, I can't remember it, is the smallest unit in the universe. So you could argue that they're the units it's made up from. But this is just quantized electric charge. So it's not the things themselves, it's the order that they form okay. that is life and creation, I think. That's the way, I, you know, sorry that wasn't very well, well, it's because I wasn't like, expecting a question. No, like, well, it, I thought we start at the beginning. Yeah. Let's go right to the beginning, as yeah. you say, um, because from all that, all things are sort of made, and then we break into where we talk about numbers, which is the interest to me because everything does seem to. People talk about vibration, sound, and what that can do, and how that can create. Everyone's talking about that. Seems to be the way things are. I sound at the minute. Mm -hmm. Sound, sound, sound. A lot of people. It is true. I mean, I could create a vibration on the mini move synthesizer there that would uh, create the effect of everyone in this block <laughs> running out of it. Um, sound. I don't, I don't know. How to, I perceive it as the only tangible thing that is magic. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? It, it, it's all this the secret laws, the unknown laws of the universe kind of combine into music and frequency. That's why it's such a key to it all. If we're talking about a sort of jumping onto on attaching to sound, um, you mentioned you talked about on your show, Kurt's a full show, mm -hmm. a chap called John D. Um, recently looking into this chap, or very recently, but going off the back of words that you said, mm -hmm. he believed, correct me, that there was um, an angelic sort of language that he was trying to tap into, mm -hmm. with, again, based on sound, and he said that was basically the keys. Well, yeah, you could call it the, the only time in history where the occult has been analysed in a scientific method. Okay. Uh, and he only got so far with it and realised that uh, he needed help from these other intelligences, which they kind of all accepted existed back then anyway. Um, so he delved into that. It was his right hand man who did the scrying and so on. Uh, what were they looking for? Well, by Dee's own records, they were looking for the word, you know, the, the underlying laws of the universe. That's what he wanted. Um, 
if you were looking for that today, you'd be speaking to Stephen Hawking or whatever, and you say, well, it will come as a formula, and that formula will describe every operation in the universe. It's this like the recipe for creation. And when I got my head around the, this whole concept of what a formula was just years ago, it kind of struck me that no, ultimately it can't, it can't be a formula. They're kind of barking up the wrong tree, I think. Because if all a formula can do is describe how things fit together, and then there's always exceptions, you know. There's no definitive formula. The two theories nowadays don't fit together, because one works on a small scale and the other on a large scale, but the two don't interact at all. So logic demands that there must be one set of laws that works at every level. Hermetic science is as above, so below. Everything is the same at every level. And all the scientists throughout history that you can go and look at who actually did anything, actually kind of did it on the back of understanding that everything is frequency, as above, so below, um, which could in theory, in theory mean that a cell in your body or an atom in your body has it, a solar system around it with people living on those electrons or planets or whatever, completely far out and yet not, because that's the way the universe would work based on what we observe anyway as I see it. And once I got into this, and you start researching things like the old alchemists and throughout history, which were just chemists and physicists, who want a better name. Not magicians. Well, they saw it as magic, because it's like, this is magic, isn't it, all this technology? Um, so, they were looking at this, they got this, and it's because they understood, or this is the hint in all of their own works, they understood that there was an ancient knowledge. It's not like they were trying to discover the laws of the universe. They were digging back to find it. Newton is a classic example. But it's stated clearly in their works, they believe there was a previous civilization with a lost technology, a lost understanding. Um, and quite clearly there was. So you don't have to look too far, as you say, nowadays to, to find some of it. Um, which brings me, I guess, to the, the prime number cross thing. Because th these um, formula, well, first of all, you've got to learn what the hell all the symbols mean anyway. And at the end of the day, it strikes me as too complicated. It, it's just too complex. Um, for example, the proof that 2 plus 2 equals 4 is that it runs to 18 pages of full scalp. You know, in numbers and formula. So it's like, oh, bollocks. So I think that's too complex. And all, you know, throughout history, if you research this stuff, you keep coming across the concept that the number is everything. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not looking at numbers in formula. Most of them are brackets and symbols that mean things. And yeah, most of those symbols represent numbers, but that's not numbers. And I've actually got a file over there of science papers and things from it was the 70s and 80s and 90s. I was reading these scientists at the forefront of physics and chemistry who, if I can remember the name, um, basically this paper suggests that consciousness is everything. Well, so for word, light, consciousness, all the same thing all the same thing. And he's trying to prove that this consciousness energy is what drives the cell and drives everything and so on. And this is mainstream kind of science. So I was reading these things and I got to the point where I could summarize them for the publication that I was involved with, which was challenging at first, but you kind of, I kind of got to understand what these boffins are wittering about and I could summarize it. And over the years of doing this, I kept thinking, no, it's in the numbers. Mm. Now, the thing that foxes people with this prime number cross thing is, A, why am I even talking about it? Am I trying to sell it? No. And B, how does it define everything? And the simplest way, without spending hours going into it, 
is to realize that scientists for centuries have looked for the pattern, the formula that lays beneath the structure of everything. They saw left, right and centre, they come up with all their ideas, but the secret was always simple and beautiful. And it's in the numbers, but quite literally the number system as we use it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, on forever, actually shows the order that, that physicists have been looking for, chemists have been looking for, the underlying order of everything. And no, it isn't like zero to infinity, that's not the order. The order comes when you put it round in a 24 hour clock. Just like the Egyptians tell you, just like everyone that's kind of hinted at throughout history, even John Dee, he's drawing his circles, where do you think all this came from? It's always circles, always numbers. Um, I could show you Dee's works in the book here, and it's primaris, numerous, etc. Whilst listening to the communications of the angels that are telling him stuff that kind of matches that scenario anyway. So the order comes out by putting it in a circle on the 24 hour clock and then the order that you see there you can then go and approve underlies everything. So the structure of everything is defined by our number system and that should shock everyone to the core because who invented it? And you can go back and look at that and a, a sceptic might say well it can't be because not so long ago we didn't even have the number zero for example um, or we didn't have this or we didn't have that and it's all changed. Now our conventions have changed but in terms of numbers one thing is one thing, two is two things, three is three things, four is four things. They're not, they stand in their own right but they're quantities of. So where am I going with that? The prime number cross defines is the answer to what your first question was. That's the structure of it. It shows how energy expands infinitely uh, whilst matter is confined within three dimensions. Uh, it, it answers it all. And I spent years running it by scientists. And they can't deal with it. So that's the answer to your question. Well, there's still some debate that zero is actually a number with a lot of yeah. uh, people. So this is what we're, we're, what we're up against or what you're up against. <coughs> well, not really, you see, because they could debate it forever if they want to. Zero is a number, zero isn't a number. So what? That's just words. What do you mean by zero? What do you mean by a number? Zero is the absence of anything. You, you could represent it with whatever symbol you want, but it's always been there conceptually, just never in maths because numbers started as an accounting mechanism and you never had zero in accounting, it was always you've got something to account for, they didn't have zeros um, but as soon as they invent them everything falls into place especially in the decimal system in the decimal system you can see the order and the others you can't nature is digital three dimensions is analog, its driving force is digital it's a computer program with an analog digital converter built in. And I would go so far as to say, quite literally, built into the physicality of everything. You've got one in your ear, it turns out. Um, I think that's what life is, digital analog conversion. So if you want to know what the matrix is, work it out. It's in the number system. Um, and I, in a silly way, I, I, was, I was talking to Neil earlier, by analogy, we face the problems that we face. There's this thing running everything. How do we bring them down? Well, you, you shake them down. It's the only way they can come down. How do you shake them down? Well, they're using an energy against us, a conscious energy. If we had the tools, we could sample that energy and send a scalar interferometry vibration back to them and that would destroy them. These are the weapons they use incidentally to destroy things. It's uh, the ultimate weapon of mass destruction. 
Is up in 9-11. The bigger the target, the easier it is to take down. So planets actually fall easier than towers do. Death star technology. Excellent. Yeah. Well, it's out there. They found Iapetus and, you know, the Death Star thing is there. You've seen it, haven't you? Star Wars? Iapetus, yeah. Iapetus, no. They found no. the Death Star. Oh, right, no, I didn't know that. Oh, it's the moon of Saturn. It looks just like the Death Star. Okay. Um, you must go and look at that. It'll take your head off. It doesn't mean it is, but it kind of, it kind of is. And this, to me, is the secret to our history. Not so long ago, the planets were quite different mm. to what they are now. Probably only three thousand years ago. All that are you saying? Planets are different. Uh, um, there are, you know, accounts of how humans lived a lot longer. Um, three, six, eight over a thousand years. Mm -hmm. It seems to be, when you look back at this, that, that wasn't just a one-off for some special demigod type person, mm -hmm. that people live a lot longer. Planets then in their in their makeup, therefore, for me, people talk about gravity and the way everything was situated, a moon that wasn't there, that is, mm -hmm. and so on. Is that, therefore, again, when you talk about the makeup and numbers, that's all part of it, that in the destruction of humans, I've asked you about three different questions here, but to me, that's the, I can't, the build up of where we're going as a race, as a unit that's been broken down, as you're saying, mm -hmm. through this matrix. What are trying to push forward? Um, yeah, <laughs> the, I could prove at all. I could prove at all, but I became aware that the energy system around the planet uh, was put there, not to work out when the next catastrophe was coming. Because if you think about that undertaking, yeah, you build all these things around the planet so you can then align and, and perhaps predict when these things, whatever caused the cataclysms, are going to come back. But you can't, can you? Because, you know, if the Earth's moved once, it could move again, and you've just spent a, how many lifetimes building these things, which no longer align. Now they... Um, <laughs> There's a communication system, like Stonehenge. You can do it to this day if you do it properly. You can go into Stonehenge, you could go to another stone circle, could be 100 miles away, and communicate between them. Now, how do you do that? Well, I know it's being done. I've seen it's being done. I don't fully understand it. People are researching it now. It's kind of an effect that's noticed. It's um, infrasound, really. This is Earth energy that you're talking about, that people have, which we know, have tapped it. You know, Nikolai Tesla said he was getting messages from yes, it's water beings, but it was all Earth energy that he was using. It's, it, the, the Earth generates the electricity. Mm -hmm. um, we Earth every well, as Tesla points out, we Earth everything to ground. Mm -hmm. Well, that's wrong, because that's where the current's coming from. We should Earth to the atmosphere. Um, and suddenly you get free energy because it flows that way. It's coming out of the generator. We're trying to, we've created a, a feedback into the generator. So what happens? It burns out. That's why electrical contacts are constantly burning because you're feeding back against the generator. So do it the other way and you have free energy and virtually resistance free as well. And that's been proven by Tesla and many others. <coughs> so. There's this science, there's an understanding of how everything works, at least far better than we have. So in realising that these people consider themselves trapped on this planet and are potentially looking for a way off it, um, even if that does take centuries through their secret societies and so on, what's going to get them off? What are they looking for? I ask myself. Forgetting the conspiracy side, scientifically, what are they looking for? Well, it has to be the one thing that unifies, you know, because the Illuminati themselves believed only one thing, and that's number is all. Number is everything. The rest you can sort out. And the one true belief system for them all is that number is everything. What does that mean? So my point is, at what point weren't they looking for the numerical code to the universe? And on that theory, you can go and look at the works of John Dee, and there he is, looking for the numerical code to unlock the universe. Well, we found it. It's the prime number cross. You would therefore expect to see in his work 
lots of things that look like the prime number cross. If you pick the book up and flick through the things, it's it's kind of there. I don't think he got it. In fact, the angels quite clearly say they were going to give him the final secret, and he never got it. Um, which begs the question, who are they? And why do they always take the piss? Because everyone knows they do. That's what they do. Um, who are they? What are you communicating with? I think a good place to start is to say you're communicating with you, your higher aspect. Mm -hmm. And people vastly misinterpret that. Um, if you're channeling, you've got to be very, very careful. It's something I have done and can do and, uh, and whatever, but I don't. Mm. I have the crystal ball, I can scry, I've, I've learned these things. I won't do it unless I really, really have to. And there's a damn good reason for that. Because what we've always said about the occult is very true. Um, these intelligences are not what they've been made out to be. They're certainly not the angels and demons that the church would have you believe. Um, in fact, I can't name it, but there's a movie coming out in the next few months. And it's based on a case, and there's been other cases like it, but this one has been documented. A woman, an old woman, gets Alzheimer's. I say old, she's probably 50 or 60 or whatever, but she get, develops Alzheimer's. And her family see this beautiful old woman do what they do. But out of this beautiful old woman came a satanic monster. Now, the point the film is making, and the point that the church has covered up for centuries, and the reality of it is that the evil, the devil, the demon, the, this real evil force comes from within. It's not, it's not external. And that's the secret of the occult, because it's this is how they keep their elites in place. The, they're worshipping, instead of Jesus, they're worshipping whatever demon they've been told. Because to them the demons are good. Because if you go back in the Bible, it, it's about the bloodlines of Cain and mm -hmm. you know, the two brothers and so on. And the mark of Cain which made him evil and therefore his bloodline is evil. And the other ones are the good ones who run the churches nowadays. Um, but if you read the Bible, it says the mark of Cain was put there to protect him from anyone who might want to hurt him. It's not. And this is the twist. If you go back, this is the twist that the, the elites have been taught. You've got Christianity and the other religions. They're taught that's not true. It's, what is true is a slight twist. Yeah, The baddie there is actually the goodie. But let these idiots work that out for themselves. Hence they become Satan worshippers or whatever. And the truth is, neither of them are. Right? It's all a load of bollocks. The occult is the biggest state um, mind control operation through history, I think. So, the devil within, then, is that therefore being manifested or brought to life because of a evil kind of matrix that sort of promotes that rhythm? And so it, it's dormant, because it, there's good and bad in everyone, but it's it's bringing that up. Maybe, are you saying then it could be manifest in a disease? Yeah. I mean, it came out because of her disease, but the, po the point I, I should make is that any master of those psychological arts like they are could trigger that to come out of somebody. Or you could NLP them or, or whatever. It's all psychology. And have you ever noticed the, the thing that really fucks people up more than anything in their lives is when, and this is hard to put into words, but when your own internal demons become too much for you. Mm -hmm. uh, so you either deal with it or you might lash out and hurt somebody or your demon hurts somebody else, whatever. Do you kill them? Do you put you know once it comes out, and that's the point, it's in everybody. And this dear old lady never ever would have hurt a fly. Um, but it actually involved physical manifestation as well. And she was able to cast, if you believe the the entire story, but you know, using I forget the name now, psychokinesis to move things, and, and all of this came because something in her brain 
tripped and unlike most people who go to this kind of catatonic state and then this demon came through and she was, well, you'll see the film I guess um, so to me the evil is within there's no externalized evil here but those who run the world so need you to believe there is because what are you going to be afraid of? The number of good-minded people I've come across who are researching what's going on, researching history, who kind of leave their brains on the doormat when it comes to religion. You know, they, they could have made great breakthroughs in other ways of thinking, but you can't tell me you've reasoned something through and that you're right if you then say, well, Jesus was the Son of God, etc., and uh, he's, you know, he's going to come again and all. It's like, because that just means that you've just not done your research at mm. all. There's no, you know, no one through history really believed that, and your elites never have because they know it's a lie. They're the ones who made it up. Just like as, uh, I was talking earlier about the Sumerian tablets. I think I mentioned this to you once before. The Anunnaki and Nibiru and all this that came out of it. I challenge any researcher to go and do this. There's, first of all, SitchinIsWrong.com and all the academics who have the Rosetta Stone for these things that was found after Sitchin's time. It's all there for anyone to go. They've got the library there. You can actually look at the, the interpretations interpreted by them themselves back then and read what these things mean. You will not find Nibiru mentioned anywhere. You won't find the word Anunnaki anywhere. Try it. You can search them. The academics have opened up the entire thing for you to go. It's all online. It's, it's, it's supposed to be here. Um, but Nibiru is here. You know, the, you know, sure is it? Where, where this is saying for it's coming. This is what they keep telling me. Well, here's one for you. It's got a 3,600 year orbit. Yeah, if you kind of work that out, um, and, and it comes in and goes right back out again, so it's an elliptical orbit. 3,600 years, do the math, it has to be travelling at a certain speed to do that. That certain speed is just the tiniest fraction below escape velocity, so a fart within 100 miles of it would send it out of the atmosphere, out of the solar system, so it ain't coming back even if it was there. So this is the kind of thing that the conspiracy theorists overlook, and I, and I am one of them, I want to get to the answers to this. Um, but it's all kind of bullshit. I mean, um, Sitchin himself said, well, no, it's, you know, planet X isn't Nibiru, but if it was, it's not due back for another 800 years. No, say the crowd, it's Nibiru. It's a, who wants you to believe that? Yeah. Who's going to so many, so many people now go... And why can't you see it? If it's here, so why can't you see something that big when you can see the things that are 20 times smaller? Ah, that's right, it's hiding behind the sun, isn't it? It's coming up from the south. What a load of bollocks. I've, I, honestly, I've seen videos where this guy who claims to have intelligence is saying... It's coming up from the South Pole, so unless you're at the South Pole, you can't see it. Excuse me? The Earth is a globe, so anywhere on the Southern Hemisphere would see anything coming from the South. And that's actually a matter of reality, anyway. Um, there's a lot of, of insanity and rubbish spoken, and it's always by the religious ones. The ones who are genuinely looking for the source of these religions, because it's got to be pretty powerful stuff. And I put myself in that category. I was shocked to find that, yeah, there is a creative intelligence behind this. Does that mean I now believe in God? Not your God. Not that one. Yeah. So, you then, once you suss this, you can go back and you, you kind of get the impression that Jesus was a, a Pythagorean student. He was certainly of the order of Malkashedek, which is a Pythagorean order. How do you know? It tells you that in the Bible anyway. So, unless he kept his eyes shut and put his fingers in his ears, mm. he'd have been pretty good at this shit. He'd have been doing these numbers. He'd have been taught them. In fact, 
oh look, go and listen to what he says. And there it is. The numbers are in the parables. That's another thing. People who take the Bible literally, you know, you find them everywhere. Try this one. When they say that everything in the Bible is the word of God, and therefore accepted that way, you say, well, I believe that too. Because it says in the Bible that not a word was spoken by Jesus that was not in parable form. So, there you go. That's why I believe the Bible and what's in it. Because it says, do not believe what's written in here. It's a parable. Who said it? Jesus. No, 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 say the Jesus lovers. Why? Because they have a psychosis. That's what your religions are. Sorry to offend anyone in this room who's religious, but it's a psychosis. Beyond it is something truly amazing, designed by an intelligent creator. But it's not this Jehovah or whatever you want to call it. That is a a mind trap that's been set up by your elite, it's been running thousands of years, and every time you get pissed off with it and say, hang on, this is wrong, I've had enough, they'll change it just enough to keep everything going again. Catholic Church is the classic example. You know, they'll burn a man at the stake one century and make him a saint three centuries later. Why? Because the people realise that in fact he was right, so ooh, the church has to adopt that mythology too. Just just on that as well, this um so the earth is a globe, but isn't it now being proven to be flat? <gasps> Shit. Just thinking, you see, can we go back with that now? Proven to be flat. Who proved it to be flat? Well, it's just people that go insane now, that's that's where up to, you know, they get into yeah. the edge of, I don't know if these people try to jump off or... There's the... Well, flat earth, I think I tackled that one on my show a few weeks ago. Mm. People who, and there are people who do believe in a flat earth, and they do have one thing in common. They're all spaz attacks, basically. That's what it boils down to. You can prove it. Um, here, here it is, it's the Coriolis effect. They love that one, yeah? You know the Coriolis effect? No, sorry. Um, there's the earth spinning. The atmosphere obviously has drag factors in each hemisphere, each different ways. So that's what creates the winds, and that's why the winds are always move to the poles. That's why they move to the poles. Um, if you're taking a, a rifle shot a, a mile away, you've got to allow not only for wind, mm -hmm. this sort of thing, but the marksman allows primarily for the Coriolis effect. If you were on a roundabout, spinning round, and you threw a ball out, you can picture the arc of the ball, can't you? That's the Coriolis effect caused by the spin. Mm -hmm. um, so he will adjust for the Coriolis effect because you'll miss by a foot if you don't. And that's to do with the spin of the earth. Their answer to that is the Coriolis effect is a myth. It, you can cross the equator and watch water spin the opposite way down your plug hole. Yeah? This is the Coriolis effect. They claim that's a myth and they go, oh, it's an illusion. Because they can't answer that one. They can't answer any of the others, actually. Because if you did have a flat earth, the last place you'd live would be on there. It's around the edges. The people who are telling you this don't even understand the basics of gravity. So why should we even listen to them? As I say, spaz attacks. And I challenge them to come on and show me how the earth is flat. Because um, they can't do it. Because unlike most others out there, I won't sit there and go, yeah, yeah, I'll say that's bullshit, mate, and here's why. Now it's your turn to show me why what I've just said is bullshit. And they can't. Why? Because they're spaz attacks who know nothing about science at all. Uh, nothing about numbers. And actually nothing about common sense either, most of them. And that's two-thirds of your videos on YouTube dealt with. They're a joke. However, the other third are incredible, and a lot of them need to be taken attention of nowadays, I think. Um, oh, that's it. I mean, some people go to the end of the earth just to prove that theory, so... I know. <laughs> it's, it's great. No, I, I mean, <laughs> to get out of it, it's, it's a fab one. I do love the flat earth thing. As, especially as, you know, just to prove that they're spaz attacks. <laughs> why, don't play, why don't planes fly over the North and South Pole? Oh, I don't know. Other than the... Um, the North and South Poles are highly guarded because I believe it, it is a hollow earth, at least to some degree. Um, 
but so I'm with you on that. But you wouldn't have the North and South Pole if it was a flat Earth. If you see what I mean. Um, Especially if they were trying to hide something. Yeah. No, I believe they are. Uh, that that much is quite clear. But there you go. So someone would call me insane for believing in a, an expanding Earth. That's great. They can call me insane. The point is, you can back this up scientifically, whereas the flat Earth they can't. It's just sorry, Matt. I mean, yeah. I mean why? When the Earth is pictured from space, it's CGI. Anyone can see that. Why do they use fisheye lens when they're when the film? What, what what possible reason would you have to use fisheye lens in space if not to create the effect of be, being a curved Earth? No, I, I kind of get that. So too. The, 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 there does seem to be a deception taking place, doesn't there? Even if you don't believe in the flat Earth, there does seem to be there a, is on a the part of the system. Place, yeah. There's a deception taking yeah, place. There is. Now, whether that deception that, that there is a flat Earth or that we can't leave the Earth's atmosphere above a certain height for some reason. We can't. We're Perhaps actually, this is a prison uh, planet. No, I, I believe, again, well, the, my answer to that one would be, does it? Yeah. Yeah? Because I hear that and I, and I could agree, but I'm the one, I, and the, and are you the seriously the saying that they're all CGI? It, yeah, yeah. It, it looks that way to me. If I could I, introduce I, you to tomorrow to a man who actually took his own film from the shuttle, would would you accuse him of? It would take longer no, than tomorrow. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have the, the temerity to do that. But no. but it just seems to me that the evidence for uh, the Earth being a globe is as, as patchy as the evidence no. of the Earth being flat. No, it's not. It, That's the what point. we're talking. What you're talking about, Mark, and you know, I'm not saying I disagree no, with you. No, no, I know. You're still talking a lot of theory that you believe to be to be true because mm -hmm. you're basing it on uh, basic your belief of maths and physics. Whereas I'm saying, if you've been to the moon, why does it look like CGI when they when they, the, the, the moon is? I, the Earth I, is I, I from couldn't the moon. answer that because I couldn't agree with you except to, you know broadly that yeah it could be CGI or it could not. I, I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. I guess you are the guy who knows that sort of thing, uh, being a camera. I, I, was, I, I spent uh, eight years in the army yeah. and um, did quite a lot of uh, shooting, marksmanship. I've never ever had to take in the effects. Sorry, I was, never, you that was never, I've, I've yeah. never had that in training. I've never, that has never been mentioned to me when I had to fire an SLR rifle. And what, what distance were you shooting over? So you're talking about a mile shot, mm. where you've got to take it into account. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'd be surprised if you look on the marksman thing and the first thing that they talk about is the Coriolis. I've never heard it. I spent eight years. But, uh, so they have to ignore that one because it's immeasurable. And yes, I'm right, you're right. I'm kind of using, it's not interpretations of the laws of physics, it's what you can observe and measure. That's the key. Uh, so I couldn't observe and measure the fact that the Earth is a, a sphere, but just like everything else in this reality, you can imply certainties that stand up, if you see what I mean. Uh, certainties in inverted commas. Uh, based on, based based on, on a the lot of it, it's based on um, people that you wouldn't tr trust as far as you could throw a small family saloon. I mean, we're talking no. about people like Isaac Newton, who was a, you know, a top-ranking Freemason, who come up with a theory, well, with the theory of gravity. Yeah. Well, people will take that as gospel, or they'll take that as they do. Does gravity exist? Are we, are we, are we no, I think this is where Newton was wrong. Right. Um, but, you know, that's, that's kind of my little yeah. story. That's, that's not, hey, Newton's wrong. I, I'm not pushing anything, but when I look at what Newton did, and he was an alchemist, not a scientist, uh, not a physicist, sorry. Um, he, oh, he, he got to the point. No, I, I, it's fascinating actually when you read his diaries because he's, he's got to the point where he was an occultist. He's yeah, they all were. Every scientist was. That's what so they were hiding something because that's what the occult means. No, it's not. No, no, no. That's that's why I disagree with the general conspiracy. Th uh, I'm not saying a cult doesn't mean hidden, that's not what I'm disagreeing with. The scientists have a mind, talking generally, to uncover how things work. Yeah? When they get brilliant and up to a certain level they get sucked into like uh, 
the circles of science or whatever. And we all know how they're restricted and so on. You speak to scientists in every different field, like we are here, out of their work or whatever, and they, they love this stuff, they want to know. Now that, to me, is what a scientist is. Um, if you discover something, which you can then prove by observation, yeah, that effect is happening as I'm watching it with my own eyes, you can take that as an accepted effect, and the Coriolis falls into that. Um, From their point of view, though. No, I mean, that's standard science. As I, as I say, I'm, I can't... You, you've taken marksmen, but I, I think if you went away and followed up what I said, you'll I'm find that every, every top marksman is trained in Coriolis right. stuff. Because um, they have to be, or they miss. It's as simple as that. And that's because the Earth is a sphere. The, uh, and you can also tell this by gravitational lensing effects that a sphere creates, as opposed to a flat disk. There's so many ways of... I'm not a scientist at that level, I can't prove it to you. Uh, but the flat Earth is provably, provably tosh, that's the point. Uh, and anyone who stands up for it actually can't account for it. They will crumble or turn it to Jesus or whatever their religion is, and it tends to be Christian for the flat Earth. The irony being that no one ever believed in a flat Earth anyway. Well, that's not strictly true. Because the ancients believed in a flat earth, and a lot of ancient scripture was uh, said that the earth was flat. And yet we've always seen it as we've always seen it as ignorance. I, I can honestly it. say I've never seen any ancient scriptures that said the earth was flat or even implied it. Well, honestly, so whatever one you're on about. Was, it, was it, it just sort of sort of mm. common knowledge by the, the commoners that people thought, you know, being as I said, the sort of basic. Minded people like the word that everything's flat and, and until you know proven otherwise. We say that's what they say. Modern science says that um, they believe that the earth was flat based on ignorance. But perhaps, devil's advocate, perhaps it was based on a general consensus that it was flat because of knowledge that it was flat. My point is it. that it never was believed that way. It's just a myth that people used to believe it. If you go back and find anything that says that, you would have achieved more than other historians have. So it's not there. Well, there's some We're told. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's I was just thinking about that when we've been talking about it before. Stephen Fry's actually said that recently, and that on a show, he said that it wasn't. People didn't think they it, was, did, it right. was flat. It's, it's made up for this conspiracy theory yeah. nowadays. Yeah. So going on to, I mean, because just moving on from that, when you're saying because the points we're making there, the flat Earth, and we're talking about planets, um, because the moon seems to be part of all this at the minute that's being put forward as part of this big. Deception, because um, it doesn't look. People are starting to realise now, um, and uh, Alex was talking about before, like a holographic video that is out in a minute. People have seen it; almost looks holographic. Um, there, there is. What, what does looks holographic? Well, they've been uh, from, the, all, yeah. from several. I'm going to have to see what you're on about. Then. It's called the lunar okay. wave, and um, the people all over the world have been filming the moon and catching this lunar wave. I know what you mean. Lunar I wave. know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And it's um, not as if they can blame it on one specific uh, brand of camera. Yeah. It's several different things. It's all capturing the same. I do know what you mean now, because I, I think I've seen the film. And they're implying from that that it's a holographic flicker sort of thing across mm -hmm. the... Yeah, mm -hmm. gotcha. That's the moon you're talking about, yeah? Yep. Yeah. I kind of, kind of could run with that. Yeah. Because the moon isn't... It's not what we're told it is, it simply isn't. And so I think how have men been to the moon? Well, you know as well as I do. Uh, the Chinese mission that just landed two months ago has proven that men landed on the moon. Really? Yeah, I didn't want to believe that either. Uh, but how yeah, they their mission by showing you the same shots, they've proved that. Yeah, um, I'll give you a link afterwards on what you saw that. Uh, it's the Jade Rabbit mission. And what China has done is landed on the moon at 19.47 degrees, thereby blowing the tetrahedral physics thing. They've landed there before the Americans, right at the key point, to signify to them. And even on their insignia, they have the interlocked tetrahedra. So they without announcing it to the world, have landed on the moon and are effectively saying to America, 
if you don't tell the world what you found here, we're going to, because we understand it. And they've proven that by landing where they have, which is a chance in 156 billion or something. Otherwise, it's just never going to happen. And they, they gave a false landing position. They said they were landing there, and then they veered off and landed at 19.47, which is like saying, well, we're talking about that number. Sorry, it was Neil I was talking to about that number. That's the harmonic for energy upwelling out of a sphere. That's how you can prove something is a sphere as well, because uh, it will have energy upwelling at 19.47 degrees north and south, caused by the very fact that it's a sphere, and this planet has them. Those that don't, uh, there aren't any. That's the point. This is a universal thing. Uh, so the, Russia, the, the Chinese have kind of got America by the short and curlies mm -hmm. at the minute, and I think it's a direct challenge to them, because you now have the People's Army in China revealing facts that the Americans have covered up for decades. But as a side effect of doing it, they've proven that the Americans did land there. That, that's what all the experts are saying, because they filmed the same things that the Americans filmed. As in landscapes? And uh, yeah, but with some detail that's uh, kind of definitive to them. I've not looked at all the detail yet, but that's what they're claiming. That for the first time ever, it proves that man landed there. Well, it begs the question, how do you lead together? Well, that, it does beg that question. Uh, looking at geopolitics now, I would suggest not, but uh, it does beg that question. and. If, if it did, I mean, I, I've, I've spotted a flaw which could prove or suggest that the Chinese were working with them. Uh, but it's almost implausible, and I need to follow it through. But it's to do with that backdrop, because what they've done is they've no... It's not digital artefacts in the background, and you've been the cameraman, you probably understand they can say it's not the experts have said, this isn't digital artefact. So, these digital, these things that are there are the same as when they were filmed by the Americans, down to the grain of them, if you see what I mean. So, that, so leaves, that leaves two options then, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it means the same backdrop. It, the least, yeah. <laughs> it means they're both doing the same thing to yeah. commas, uh -huh. or they're both doing uh, honest things. Uh, yeah. The MO yeah. can suggest that they're doing the dishonest thing. Yeah, my, inst my instinct is that China's taken them on. No, because mm -hmm. when you look at it, you'll see it's pretty sweeping stuff what they've done. Um, and the Americans certainly reacted to it and so on and so forth. But yeah, if they're working in league, they've used the same movie backdrops which have the same, literally the same grain. But that's what they're saying. What you're looking at is literally the same as what they filmed back then, which proves that they were there. Or it proves they're using the same backdrop. But that Kubrick filmed. Yeah, uh, but they would have advanced since then, wouldn't they? Even backdrops have changed since then. They'd have had to use the original one. Mm. That's the point. And that's stretching plausibility just a little bit. Um, a, a little bit too much for me. So I'm running. So this is why I have to resort to the numbers, you see, because the numbers do tie up. And that's the science that they're working with. Because 19.47 is free energy for everyone. It's here to tap from those points on the earth as degrees north and south, sort of thing. So would you be tapping, sorry, mm. would, you, would you be tapping into the electric universe? Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, it, that, that's what's going on. Mm. Um, but it's spin that causes it. And this seems to be the ancient, the ancient secret, to my knowledge, is spin. It's angular momentum. And... This is crazy, but um, it's not really. There's technologies left in this country, Avery Stone Circle being one of them, of mass inducing spinning disc technology, which the ancients used. And that's what would have controlled the spin rate of the planet. Um, and far out though that may seem, this planet has been engineered in that way to sustain life. Of that much I 
I'm very clear. Obviously, I could prove it on the camera, but anyone who goes and looks can prove it for themselves. But the reason I wanted to try and look at that over the years was because in my early days, kind of in the cocky level twat that I was, I was delving in places and asking impertinent questions. And I found that there's people up there who believe this anyway. So I, it's kind of been unfolding what their belief is because it's so far out. And here I am today realizing that, yeah, actually what I was told they believe at the top pounds out. Um, and they have this technology and they, they've had it all throughout. But the one thing that really unleashes the entire technology is the prime number sequence in nature. And as I say, that's only recently been discovered to, to re reveal its pattern if you put it in a circle. Um, and even that would be a spherical thing as well, because it's spinning on two axes, so it wouldn't be a straight a model of a flat universe, if you see what I mean. Um, or it might be. I mean, this is the point that no one knows. No one actually knows what's going on, except them at the top who do, that have been looking for the key. I believe they found it with a prime number cross. It was given to them. Um, they knew what they were looking for anyway. There's proof of that, you know, Newton and D and many, many others are looking for this. Uh, so they found it, and that would have been 1992 that they would have had that. Uh, but what was the catalyst? For, sorry, Paul, what was the catalyst for finding? It was um, a, a, scient a scientist or a chemist actually called Plichter. Um, and it was his lifelong desire to find the unifying thing between chemistry and physics and biology or whatever. Uh, so he studied all subjects, um, got degrees in them all, and then went to study number theory and found, that's basically Kabbalah, for want of a better word, um, and found it. But throughout history, there's loads of hints. Uh, the Egyptians did the 24 hour clock. Um, it's all to do with the circle. This is why Freemasons look to square the circle. All the numbers for this geometry, you could say, are all about squaring the circle, whatever that means. When you ask a Freemason what it means, you'll get some philosophical answers and some practical ones, but they're all aware that you can't actually square a circle mathematically. You can in four dimensions, that's the point. And the math that's coming down through the crop circles is trans-dimensional, you know, four-dimensional geometry uh, scaled into three dimensions via the math in some of these circles, etc., etc. So whoever's doing this understands trans-dimensional physics. And that, and we're just breaking into it, you know, at the forefront of our physics. So there's something very, very big going on. And one thing's for sure, it takes our elites by surprise. They don't get this crop circle thing. There's a third party doing it. Um, if you speak to some of those who actually make them as well, it's not like they're being mischievous, and although some of them I'm sure are, but they are inspired by some external source. They're given this geometry and this pattern, and, and they need to put it down. So it's almost like we're being stretched. As I said in the show, we like stretched to think. Because I do, but I think these are the times. It, it doesn't take a genius to work out humanity can't go much further unless we get our shit together, you know? We're going to destroy everything. And I think. Um, well, they are. Yeah, I think that's kind of what's coming. They are. Just, yeah. can I ask this, this question before it goes up. <laughs> Life force, energy, from a spinning sphere, that's what we talked about. The moon. Well, it does, but it's kind of in sync, yeah. This is, this is a confusing one. Okay, I'm trying to work out. I kept, see, as the moon is sort of portrayed, if you go to... Yeah, it's, it's, in, it's uh, in lock, so yeah. um, 
Yeah. <laughs> right. Let's not go there. We need to draw pictures. But okay. Yeah. So I'm just sure that if, if that is to dispel the myth that then that is just a rock and is there for a purpose of people say a station or a um, satellite to interfere with the people on this planet. No, no. Yes, that's a conspiracy theory. And yes, if you wanted to control this planet, I couldn't think of a better place to be than the moon to do it from. Mm -hmm. um, so all that aside, or well, Labour Party. Yeah. Uh, phew. No, you see, if it comes down to DNA, life itself, it requires something to start it off. Now that's something you can't put words to other than it will, this is what science is showing. It's, um, I'm going to forget the, the, the words now, it's it. Come on, Mark. <laughs> Um, well, they can't explain it. I mean, they, they say it's a chemical reaction, don't they? That's the spark of life, don't they? they yeah, it, 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 ATP um, molecules. But I, I was actually on about the. Oh, come on, Mark. Sorry about this. You cut this bit out. I keep forgetting the bloody words. Uh, shear, torsion. That's what it is. Angular momentum. So. Creative tension is set up between systems. So if you've got two systems, call it negative and positive, and they're sitting idly by each other, they're doing nothing. There's no creative force there. Spin one of them, and you've got an angular momentum, that, uh, and it creates a creative tension. It's that tension that, by putting the moon exactly where it is, uh, not only does it act like the limiter on a steam engine, have you seen a limiter valve? As it swings out, the steam releases, and so it doesn't build up anymore. It's a limiter on our system, um, but it's also placed exactly to create exactly the right creative tension, uh, shear, torque, um, call it what you will, to stimulate the life forces that are needed. I mean, the, the oceans and waters are just one of those things. Um, it's the washing of the shorelines that creates the places where life can happen and all this kind of thing. How did life start? Well, who the hell knows? You know, science has spent its lifetime trying to find that. But <coughs> it's clearly uh, analog. It's down to ion, sorry, proton ion exchange systems uh, by creating a gradient again using torque between the two systems it creates a gradient and stuff flows that seems to be life that seems to be what life is now if at that point it's picking up the planetary consciousness or whatever consciousness energy that could explain life i'm not looking to explain life i'm looking to explain why people want to Put an end to it, mm. you know. But they they found all of this stuff, and this is where you have a problem with the theory of evolution, for example, which is pretty cool nowadays. Say so that's rubbish, that's bollocks. It simply isn't, but it's simply not right either. But you can't get rid of it. There's more to it. Um, he himself said it was flawed and so on, but it's been pretty. It's pretty much understood now. Well, apparently, the uh, you can fit the evidence for the theory of evolution in the average size living room. Uh, no, you can mm -hmm. until you go and look for it. You'd need a pretty, really, pretty good living room. There's um, 1,850 examples of missing links, for example, but you're told there aren't any. But if you go and speak to the scientists who've spent their lives doing this. That's it. But then you'll read a book or see a video and it'll tell you, oh, it's not a missing link. Because, uh, but the fact is, they're the liars. These things are there. And you've got to mind, you'd, you'd look at it, you'd read about it, and you'd, yeah, yeah, I get that. That is a missing link, arguably. The point is, you see, the, the church, or the, it's not even the church nowadays, they don't give a damn about evolution, it's the Christian nutters who do, because they think it's anti uh, church, it's anti spiritual because they think it implies that we were all animals etc 
and we're above that. Well, it's not. It's just spiritual arrogance. It's just spiritual arrogance. If you, they've worked out how mechanisms work, and this lot are kind of completely denying it. I think it's just not halfway out, is it? it? I mean, you've got even the materialist Darwinist theory. No, but you see, it's or not you've got the the, the spiritual. Um, no, factor. no. I think that's. I think that you, you've nailed the deception that's going on because uh, to say that one's spiritual and one's material is, is nonsense. It's not. If you read Darwin's stuff, is that yeah, it's material, but this survival of the fittest um, mentality that came out of it, well that, that was nothing to do with Darwin or, you know, the facts remain, the fittest survive, you know, get over it, it's kind of, that's the reality out there. Um, the mythology's been built around this, there's, you, you see if you take Sheldrake's work and put it next to the ex accepted Darwinian stuff, I think you have a, a near, near complete picture of biofeedback mechanism. DNA has been proven to receive and transmit energy to and from the local environment. Standard science would say, no, it doesn't receive information from the environment. You know, how, how does it do that? But it is, it's a transceiver. So that's what they need to wake up to. And then Darwinist evolution then becomes, oh, Sheldrake's, if you see what I mean, the uh, morphic resonance, they're just one step away from agreeing. Uh, but you have the debates because it's always the Christian against the non-Christian. And that's actually the illusion that they've set up. Um, because it's hiding the actual thing that is going on. Uh, and the real discoveries that have been made. Uh, there's still a lot of missing evidence though, isn't there? There's still a lot that doesn't fit. You know, it's not clear cut by any means, is no, it? No, I know, I know, but I mean, please so don't think I'm sat here giving a... Yeah. I'm not saying, Darwin is right, and you, uh, that's not what I'm saying. A lot, Darwin a lot seems wrong. to point to design, doesn't it? It, 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 it does. Yeah, and it does. Uh, that would imply does. sort of it's outside it. intervention almost. It's well, just, according to our logic it would, yes, but I think I'd stop there, because, yeah, we don't know. We're going into realms there that we can't really think about. Um, well that, then again, we dismiss a lot of ancient texts, don't we? We dis, dis, dismiss a lot of ancient artwork in caves, and we dismiss a lot of ancient hieroglyphics. Well, well do you and, see, and we just take it. Again, the cave the hieroglyphics and artwork in the caves, that's definitively being proven to be plasma discharge symbols. Are you, are you aware of what I'm on about with that? I'm not. Right. Something happened in the past and the people around the world recorded what was going on in the sky by drawing these things, yeah? Some of them are profound shapes. The stick man is the most famous one throughout history. Cut a long story short, plasma scientists um, doing plasma experiments in the labs, plasma adopts certain forms at certain stages and current inputs, yeah? And it will morph into this form or that form. And I'm going to be wrong with the figures, but let's say that there's 35 different forms have been found. And nothing else, that's them. That's what plasma does. They are the 35 pictures you find around the world without any doubt. It's not even open to interpretation when you look. It's just a complete mind-blowing concept because the only way you get plasma discharges like that is by bringing two spherical bodies together and that's clearly what happens and the plasma discharges are such that they can strip miles deep canyons off of planets um, again the signature that leaves behind is definitive and scalable in science this is proven stuff so what you do in a lab with an arc, they can see on Mars, the surface of Mars was stripped with electrical arcing. Mm -hmm. This much is pretty definitive. Even though some would say, no, it's not, it's not proven. You, know, you go to Mars and prove it, guys. It is proven, that's the point. And what happened was we've had a planetary rearrangement. This could be where the myth of the Earth only being 6,000 years old or whatever actually came from. Um, but I doubt it because this appears to be three or four thousand years ago. 
when the planets were visibly aligned differently to what they are now, much, much closer. There's even stories of Saturn going away, disappearing. These were the gods that arrived and disappeared. This was not the Anunnaki. The gods were always the planets. They were always sky worshippers. Because what happened out there destroyed man. It destroyed this planet. And that, is, that to me is what's been going on. Don't look for gods. Do look for elite control. Psychological control using high technology uh, way beyond even that which we think we know about nowadays. But, but surely then, um, you say, say don't look for gods and this the, the higher intelligence then. You know what I mean? People, when people in this room, we've all sort of fought the system in our own way. And in doing that through the matrix, we started to find out the intricacy of this system and everything we're talking about. This isn't just, as you say, a couple of parties who thought let's just shit on little people and skin for everything. It goes far beyond that. It does. Um, and then you talk about Sumerian tablets, etc. And the Sumerians and who's controlling this planet because it isn't the people that are in power, it's a higher. So, is it then therefore we're saying about um, spirit beings, etc., and angels and demons, where are we are, or is it just a race again, a different bloodline of these people that are here still situated that are piddling about? This is, the this is a, an awkward one because I don't know, but I guess I know as much as anyone else does and more than, than many because I've been looking at this for 30 years. Years. So, on that level, what do I conclude? Marduk is what I conclude. That's who's running the world. But if you need a name, the okay. Babylonian god Marduk is still here. Uh, and ever since then, you know, that, that, the visible leaders of the world throughout history have always been doing the bidding of that character and his controlled body whatever that happens to be. I think that's what's actually going on. Why do I believe that? Because there's people at the top who believe that there's a, that, that this is real. That name's never been mentioned. That's, yeah, but are I think they that's doing this. Um, this through a certain race of people through the, through the decades? Or is there um, a country of origin that is specific to this, or is it just all and a few people that this would have Well, it would come from the. Um, I mean, we were talking about the stone tablets before, mm -hmm. the Babylonian epics. And that. Uh, who made those stone tablets? It was the elites at the time. It was the ruling body at the time, created the, or told the story of their be beginnings and whatever on those tablets. Now that's. That story is what we're being asked to believe today in terms of the Anunnaki and so on. Um, so, you'd have to imagine that these elites, with their, I don't imagine how much it cost to cut stone and everything in the way they did, uh, and they put this story down for the people to worship and follow and believe, which is what they've done throughout history, and it comes along with every hermetic uprising. If the church doesn't have domination, this is the next one. Um, Oh, the church kept its domination. They put that back in the bag until they put it out again. Um, these tablets were written for control purposes by the ruling elite at the time. Why should we today believe it's the story of the gods who created man? Isn't that what they would have been telling the men and the women at the time? The gods created you. We're the, in, we're the mediators. You do as we say. Or they... They could be saying, we're the gods, we made you, whatever. Look, it's all here in stone. You've never seen this in stone before. Look at this marvel. And they all worship them. The elites make those tablets. They created that story, true or otherwise. Today, the conspiracy movement is believing it. I have an issue with that. Yeah? And you can probably see what it is. The fact that what's on those tablets might make a lot of sense, or it could actually, to some extent, be true. Um, at no point does it say what Sitchin said it says. And even those who say Sitchin was right, and they've done their translations and so on, follow it through, and they haven't. They're just repeating from Sitchin's books and so on. So I've yet to find an academic in our, on our side of the fence who will take that Sitchin thing 
on because they're proving that Sitchin is not only wrong but a liar. Yeah? Or are they? If you can prove that what they're saying is, is untrue, but that's the point. People like Michael Desario and so others, they no, they're just taking Sitchin at his word. It's quite a dangerous thing to do for a high-level Freemason and CIA agent. But there you go. So this is... So I, I'm not into believing anything. I will look and I'll put my mind around it and I'll come to my own conclusion and I'll change my mind if, if it has to be changed. And I, I, I love the day, you know, if I have to sit here and say, shit, you're right, the earth is flat, I'd be the first to do it. But my point is... Nobody has come up with any credible evidence. I hear a lot of people saying they have, but sit me with them for five minutes and we hopefully would have a joke um, and get over it all. Because it's the same lines of argument you hear coming from the religious crowd who are pretty much insane with their physics. The only way that you could have a flatter... You see, the Earth is flat. If you travel towards it at the speed of light or approaching it, it'll look flat. So it's all a matter of perception, really. Uh, to a, a sunbeam, the Earth is... That's really all that's coming out of me. Is, uh, plus, there is a huge, huge program to convince people that the Earth is flat. It is, it's Vatican Jesuit sponsored the whole thing. It's always at the times of these hermetic revolutions yeah. that I dig this out. And it's all a distraction. It's all a distraction. Um, away from the realities. What what should you do for this next bit? Do you give it like another half an hour for Yeah, well I guess we should go into uh, the financial stuff. Yeah. Um, how important to you is the Kabbalah in in knowledge? Wow, it lies at the root of uh, all occult demonology and numerology, so very important. Um, it is Kabbalists who are doing this, you know, the, the, the Kabbalah, uh, Kate for example, we'll, we'll talk about words uh, and many others are, the meanings of words, the origins of words, the root um, essence of words, which is a vibratory thing. Mm. Uh, but as anyone knows, the Kabbalah gives numerical value to letters and therefore words and vice versa. So the two are completely interchangeable. Uh, when you consider that number, if, if you accept what I said earlier, that number is everything, then you're kind of left with the realisation that the Kabbalah does contain secrets. And this is why all the scientists throughout history have, been look, have looked at Kabbalah. Uh, as if they knew something back then mm -hmm. but again I'm not utterly convinced that they are I've seen a lot of revision to this over the centuries it seems to be a, an ongoing thing see part of my belief system is and it can change but the elites are as much you know, those who are doing this or as much bought into their version of the fantasy as, l let's say, the Christians are in the Western world. Uh, the elites hide behind Christianity, claiming that they're Christians, um, they are presidents and queens and all this sort of thing, when in fact it's quite obvious that they're not. What they are is, I call it, dark Christianity. They, they are aware that in fact the princes and kings of the world came from the other bloodline, Cain's bloodline. So they're attaching everything they know to this biblical history and biblical story too. But that is the great mind warp operation really. Um, so you have one side called Satanism and the other side called Christianity. Well who invented the demons in the first place? Christianity did. It's just an offshoot of Christianity, and it's uh, just like the other side, it's a fear-based thing. So your elites are controlled by it, um, and they gain power through it, because it's a, it is an empowering thing. 
whereas religion uh, tends to be its mirror image or giving away your power to a, a vicarious interloper, you know, a, a priest or whatever. Um, the third thing is the real thing, as far as I'm concerned. You know, we did come from somewhere. There is some physics or whatever behind this. So what is it? Um, and it lies back with Kabbalah. John Dee investigated that because he, he was well aware that he'd find some of the secrets of nature within it. In fact, that's what the Kabbalah's always claimed anyway. It's supposed to reveal those things. So then on, on from that, um, you talk about the religions and people worshipping outside themselves. Um, in splitting the atom, was that a Kabbalistic way of sort of turn into another dimension to contact someone or something? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, God, I, 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 I wouldn't answer that question because I wouldn't know how to, other than to say yes, because <laughs> that's what they're doing at CERN yeah. to this day. Uh, it's about, the physicists know that everything we perceive is merely our three-dimensional perception of a higher dimensional structure. Right? That, that's kind of proven. Um, so they want to know what that higher dimensional structure is and where it exists. Clearly it exists in a, a fourth dimension that is part of our three. I would say there's four dimensions and the three are included in it, just like there are my fingers there, or three is in four. Um, Seems like using a hammer to crack a nut though, not it? Letting off a nuclear atomic bomb to... Um, no, I mean, that, that's why I said I couldn't answer that, because that, that kind of had nothing to do with the... Uh, oh, I, I don't know. They're, they're, you see, they were always going to invent the nuclear bomb, weren't they? And once it's invented, they were always going to set it off. Um, Although the so figures, it the figures behind it all seem to be of a certain ilk, you know what I mean? They were all Kabbalists, you know, self-confessed, you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they will be, but you see... Oppenheimer and... Um, what would you call a Kabbalist today, other than a number theorist or a physicist, maybe? Because um, these are just words. You see, Kabbalah is simply a numerical swapping system for, for letters. Um, Although it's based in Jewish mysticism, isn't it? It is. I, and, but so is so much of the uh, mythology that's being uh, implanted in people today. And I think I flatter it's actually one of them. I'd have to check that. I seem to think that has Jewish roots. Because um, it never had any Christian ones. But there, there, there's so much to look at. But yes, they're piercing the veils. You, you've. Uh, the veils of Isis is what they're trying to pierce, but in my terms, that is piercing through these three dimensions into the fourth, the source dimension. Um, they're also looking for the magnetic monopole, which they're not, they're not going to find. They claim they found the Higgs boson. That's Tosh. Mm -hmm. um, There's even the guy who's found it, and it's all named after, and so on. Just said, well. They've not really found anything. They've found an effect. Um, and they know this. So it's just another long search for, uh, as a cover story, really, I think, for what's really going on. And it's, so, yes, that is what they're doing, breaking through the veil. But that unleashes not only nuclear technology, but um, scalar, call it what you will. That technology can be used to clear up nuclear radiation as a method of reducing the half-life of nuclear radiation using um, vibratory tools, um, and that really needs to be looked at too. Would it be right then, um, in saying and going on from that, to say that the Akinashi Jews appear to have become the developers of the middle school <coughs> for the Mar Jews? or whoever that they take their orders from? Wow. Uh, it all goes back. You see, it's, it, this is a hard one. See, I could track out my version of history uh, as I see it, and how that pans out today. But it all 
all goes back through this Jewish thing. Uh, it is very much driven by capitalists and therefore Jewish. Uh, entertainment industry, 9 out of 10, Jewish, etc. So this is where you fall into sticking in you know, deep water, as, as I think we all find, because mm. is there a Jewish conspiracy to control the world? Well, the old Voltaire quote, to find out who rules over you, just see who you're not allowed to criticise. That's right. So I think it's pretty obvious, isn't it? What's, uh, <laughs> yes, there is. And actually, if, if, if go ask them. I've spent years, when I could, speaking to all, all sorts of people in all sorts of religions or whatever. But um, the whole basis of their faith is that they are the chosen people and that everyone else uh, is actually there to do their bidding and so on. And I think that's the way it's turned out. But as we all know, the, the, whole, the Jewish thing itself is simply a cover for this global economic plan that these elites have put in. Because what's an Ashkenazi Jew anyway other than an, an adopted one? And did they adopt the nationality or the race or did they adopt the religion? Well, it's that's it's the hard argument. to say it's a race, Judaism. No, but that's the argument that, that, that the Jews will always use. Mm -hmm. Some say it's, uh, sorry, I, I, you are right, I, the word race was completely wrong. I meant uh, a religion. Um, or is it a, or is it not? And you find that they have two schools of thought as, as well. So, to me... Well, it points, well, it, it, sorry to interrupt, but it, it oh. does point to that the Ashkenazis are from, as you, as you said that, that they usurped Judaism in a way because they it took is. it on in the 8th century. Was it that early, I think? Yeah, yeah I'd have paid for the, uh, so, yeah, a bit later, but, uh, you know, I, I'm crap with numbers. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> yeah, so, they, so they're not, uh, I mean, if you, if you were to look at original Jews, you're probably talking Sephardic Jews. I mean, you've even got Ethiopian yeah. Jews, aren't you? Well, that's right. And actually, they're probably the, uh, the closest to the original anyway, the... So it seems that the middle management for Marduk or whoever this uh, top of the pyramid is would be the um, Ashkenazi Jew. They would. They would. Uh, just like World War Two, it was all focused around that. Just like World War One was as well. Um, the stories of the six million Jews slaughtered in World War One and so on. Uh, I think, you know, we're living in an age supposedly of revisionism. And coming to terms with the Holocaust, because World War II always fascinated me, and still does, um, but in coming to terms with it, the first thing anyone finds when they go to try and research it is that you, you simply can't, because there's nothing there to research, and that's the disturbing thing. Uh, you then realise that even officially the numbers, it wasn't 6 million, it was 2.6, and that's been revised officially. I might be misquoting, but it's two point something. Um, to which the argument is, well, two million or six million, it's still terrible. Only if you're trying to prove something, yeah? Otherwise, you've got to take the facts on. And the facts are that the gas chambers, at certain ones were never used for gassing people, etc. This is proven, um, you know this. So this is a subject I think kind of needs to come out. Uh, and, and it is, but it's always it going does, to be but it's been actively yeah. suppressed. And it will it? be in this country too. With yeah. uh, imprisonment and yeah. the threats of huge fines and loss of livelihood, and which does, you know, what, what are they trying to hide? What, what, why would you hide from, you know? Possibly, possibly the fact that it was actually a, um, a Jesuit driven Roman Catholic uh, operation to remove its enemies. Um, and I would suggest that some of the camps were used for burning people, but these were these people were burned alive. These were death rituals, um, and you can extend that story. It's all think at the minute. This is my own area of research. Uh, Stauffenberg, who tried to kill Hitler, who was the most respected man in in the military. Uh, you know whatever that means, but he truly, truly was. He was. He came from a Catholic elite family, the um, Hohenstaufen line, the kings, of, the princes of Germany, and so on. And 
It was his mission to take Hitler out. Roman Catholic? Well, Hitler was Roman Catholic. What this guy actually was, was a member of the Templar families. So that there was a mystical crusade to remove Hitler. Um, so the, the Catholic thing is tied in with Hitler. It's tied in with the, the, the Holocaust and what happened. They are, it's like they changed the purpose of the war. We've all perhaps heard this one nowadays as well, but the war was to protect Poland, you know to save Poland, because we had a treaty to honour. Strange how we give Poland away, you know. Strange how we give it to Russia at the end of the war, no one gives them. It was nothing to do with Poland, because Churchill's on record as having, having threatened Poland to invade them the next morning if they gave Germany what they wanted. Which was Germany's... Um, they just wanted to feed their people in, in the, East Prussia. Yeah, Prussia. East Prussia, yeah. yeah. So it, it, and and um, <coughs> when asked uh, in, in 1944 whether, uh, by one of his generals in a, in a conversation uh, whether it was the right thing to do, mm -hmm. he said, well, they would have attacked us anyway That's because right. Churchill was already threatening long before they went into That's Poland. Right. But because, well, Just I don't like know why you're a because um, Hitler or the Germans introduced interest-free money into the system. Mm -hmm. So immediately they were at odds with the central bankers of the rest of the Yes, um, you know, and the and the other country. That's the best book you could ever read is Hitler's Banker. It's kind of fascinating. Hitler's the the man Hitler's Banker, written by the man who did all yeah. of this. Um, the other country in the Second World War that introduced interest-free money into the system was Japan. How many people know that? How many people are aware of that? And it seems to me. I don't know what you think, Mark. But yes. Um, um, the the, the it's the destruction, the, 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 the absolute annihilation of Germany, the seven million Germans that were killed after the end of hostilities in the Second World War. Uh, yeah. Fuck. And then the nuclear attacks on Japan afterwards was like, was like the central banking system saying to this is what happens. Mm -hmm. well, no, I think I was one of the first to point that out. Every war that I'm aware of has been started by somebody challenging the financial yeah. uh, elite. Um, now, as to whether Japan issued its own currency and so on, the reason no one really knew that was because that's, a, that's kind of a twist on... It, it could be seen that way, but it's, I would say officially it's not. Germany, officially, yes. Um, but even issuing currency of your own, is it, it, that'll explode too. That will inflate a currency unless you manage it properly. He managed it properly. Now look what happened. We can do that. Eight years from now, everything sorted, not an issue economically, issue the currency. The, proof, the, proof. the proof's in the pudding because uh, Germany was uh, went from a country that was on its ass, yep. carrying the wages home in a wheelbarrow, yep. from you know to five or six years later building uh, an economy that could take that's on the rest of the world. That's right. So and that's why they had to be destroyed. Exactly. And uh, you know there was, there was a clearly a plot going on with the British elites who. See, I don't think we were meant to go to war. I think this was Churchill and his cronies, his financiers, that caused this. The only person who wanted a war, even on record, was Churchill. Um, Whose mother was Jewish. Yeah, yeah there's, there's kind of... I've got, I've got a great book, you must borrow sometime, Churchill. Um, but it's all, it's all the family writings and, and all the family stories, everything rather than a historical document. It's written like a novel, but it is a historical document. And in there, you you really get a feel for the kind of guy that this Churchill was, mm. other than a, a serial failure, um, a military disaster. Uh, drunkard. An, an arrogant drunkard. Um, all, all of these things. And this man... Peter Val, by all accounts. Yeah. But at most will be when they get there. Um, but we know how they use that. Yeah. Um, but it, it's sick. And actually, what woke me up to this was I was listening in, was it 1971? Yeah. To a song by David Bowie. You know, no surprise there. And a line in it was about Churchill's lies. Now, of course, my dad had, uh, he hadn't fought in the war, had been in the RF, all these things. So, 
what's this about Churchill's lies? Why is he known as a liar? He said, well, he's not. I said, oh, right, so a few months later, I'd, I'd read enough books to go back to him and say, actually, yeah, he's noted as being a, a, a liar. He, he betrayed this nation. Of course, my father gets none of this because they only saw Churchill being the, you know, the public figure that he was. Um, but it is there. The guy was a cretin. He caused that war, and uh, it's kind of going to cause the, the one that's here with us now and growing. It's bloodlust. It is a bloodlust, isn't it? They, they are uh, clinically insane, but actually all they're protecting is themselves. Yeah. And this, this is the issue we've got. Because even if tomorrow I could put a rational case, and believe me it can be done, that's why they never give us the chance, uh, to issue our own currency debt free in the correct way uh, and to do other things it can all be put right even if all the public saw that well, yeah that's great that's what we want they can't give in it's their source of income that's the end of it they will go to war over it so if you wanted to be a real kind of uh, art of war strategist over this the only way to take them on the overwhelming force that's around our border, you know, waiting to take us on, is to do what Hitler did in Barbarossa, an attack. The only reason he attacked Russia, which is a, it's plainly on record nowadays, uh, was because the Russians had massed the biggest army in history on the European borders. Operation Thunderbolt. Yeah, and bang, so he went in. Pre you know, getting there before they can muster, and slaughtered them before they could. Oh, no, 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 we're not supposed to know that stuff, because that's what Churchill was doing. He allowed Europe to become communist. Why is that? Is there a connection between Jews and communism? Hmm. Hmm. So, yeah, these are ruling elite families who believe the story that I've been reading out, and maybe we all should, um, will control that. They will not stop this is coming to an all-out war against the elites it's going to be the rich against the poor the problem with that is there's lots of well what's rich you know because the people we need to take are the super rich uh, people like our queen like our prime minister and that kind of thing these people need taking out now that doesn't mean shooting them or whatever, but we know they're not going to go. They'll hide behind politics, they'll hide behind lies. At some point in this country, we need to make their lives hell, and we need to go to war against them. Now if that means us being locked up, so be it. There'll just be more and more following in those footsteps. It's kind of got to come to that. Or... Serve them. Or we can take a chance and this is why I said we, we need to go and ask them the question rather than telling them what we want or object ask them the question what, why are you doing this particular thing to us that'll do and do you think we get an answer don't need it the power of the rhetorical question in public view is devastating that's the point um, and I asked one on a radio show recently and uh, the, the effect is quite devastating yeah that's what I want to do well, that was a simple level I'm talking about, and I won't mention names, of course. But ask the question. It's a killer. If you. The, the one I keep relating it to is the old boyfriend girlfriend situation where one thinks the other's playing away, kind of suspects it, but is afraid to ask because the moment you hear the answer, everything you thought is just gone. You know, your illusion is gone. So they don't ask. They'll never ask the question. And it'll go on a year or two. And then you, you'll get, I bloody knew she was playing away, or I knew he was playing away. And it should. If you'd asked the question then, you just saved yourself two years of grief. And it, it's kind of on the same basis. Are you playing away? You know, ask them. Because even if they're lying, their face will tell you that. You only know by asking the question. And that's a, a trite example. By asking the question of our leaders in full public view, the effect would be vast because you're talking about the most hidden subject to them. 
they can't even engage it in public, and yet they'd have people here asking, a, not protesting, just asking a question. Um, and you're right, nothing would happen. We'd expect nothing, and I certainly wouldn't want an answer, because there's not one they can give, so you know you're not going to get one. But at that point, all these energies that are building, people are waking up to the issues of currency, the bankers have ripped us off. At that point, a question will unleash holy hell for them. And all we've got to do is step back and watch it. But you can't have a revolution without having a plan as to how to go on. And I found no one in this country at all, and not even in America, who's actually considered the clearing houses in the disaster that's coming. Because the banks have about 5% of the money and the clearing houses have the other 95%. Um, and it's not the banks that are really the issue, it's the clearing houses. All money is in transaction, you see, and that goes through clearing houses. There's not money that it, there's not that much that isn't in transaction. That's what the banks have. Everything else is the clearing houses. Who owns them? Same people. But the moment they clog up, everything stops. That ship with the things coming into port will literally turn around or anchor there. Um, everything stops. Like that, the minute it goes, uh, that order you're delivering is such and such, we're not going to be paid. Bring it back. Or orders that have been delivered, unpaid. So the whole lot just implodes overnight. Uh, and that's what Lloyd George did back then. And, I, and he did. He got this country through that crisis by telling the bankers what to do. They then shafted him again afterwards. Mm. But there's a new spin being, or a different spin being put on that scenario uh, nowadays uh, with the Bradbury Pound and this kind of thing. Um, so I, I, I've got my eye on it and when people step out of line according to what I think the line is, all I'll ever do is go and ask them and they, they might correct me. It's like, oh, well, I've, yeah, I've learned that, thank you. But I'll ask the damn question, just like with the Bradbury Pound. Why did it take a whistleblower to tell you something that's in a book and I have it in the next room that I've had since I was 16? It's there. Why does it take a Bank of England whistleblower to tell you that? Because I knew it. Many people I knew in finance knew this stuff. And yet it takes a Bank of England whistleblower to tell them. That is an issue. That's kind of an issue. So you have to suspect or be suspicious of that and ask him the question. And the fact is they've never answered the question and they can't. So from, from that, do you think then that the elite are aware of the force of this awakening, that the question is about to be asked of people at that level? Or do you just, I mean, if we just came out with that one day at a press conference, that they would be, each, they think they've done us down enough to, to, not, to never expect mm -hmm. that? It's not about asking you to do a press conference, although that would help. There's been, well it would, like, like evictions today, there's probably people stood outside, as there have been ones recently with banners saying that, you know, uh, banksters, whatever, slagging off the banks, debt, is, you know, debt problems, all this sort of thing. Um, where's the ones that say, issue our currency debt free? Because that would solve all these repossession problems, you wouldn't have to go and attend 10,000 of them. Where is there one banner saying this? Drawing people's attention to the one issue that causes all of these debt problems. Uh, is it because our protest movement isn't intelligent enough to get that? I don't know. Let's ask them. Next time you're at an eviction, say, why, why are you not... Because you can solve his problem if you're lucky, and he doesn't get evicted. But what about the rest of them? It's almost a psyop that they've been able to equate people protesting about the central banking system That's it. with anti-Semitism. In the minds, especially on the left of politics, mm -hmm. it's like a knee-jerk reaction. If you start to talk about the, the money system, ultimately, no, you're talking about Jews who are hidden hand. Yeah. When it comes to banking, all the Jewish banks are not owned by Jews, except one, and that was the one that collapsed. That was the only bank they let collapse. So you're not looking at Jews behind the financial thing. Um, but you're looking at their, their belief system uh, being used as a vehicle 
for the controlling elites. And it's also a flag of convenience. It is, yeah. Um, <coughs> and as we all know, yeah, they hide behind it. You get accused of being anti-Semitic or uh, a revisionist or, or or whatever, and it's like you can't. Uh, how do you step beyond that? Because actually, the problem is that people are ignorant. Because you could have Mrs. Jones there, who could question what I just said about uh, the Jews, and it seems to track me. And she said, "You're an anti-Semite," and it's like, uh, "No, I'm not." You know, and we've all, you know, we all know the Palestinians are Semites and this kind of thing nowadays. Anyway, um, people are ignorant when it comes to history of any sort, and particularly the religions. So. Even if you're qualified to the nth degree in religion, say, it's pointless taking on a religious discussion with these people, because you can't go anywhere. Where to from there? Um, the money thing itself. I've always been looking for key triggers, which I was aware have to be pulled. It's a bit like if you want to set off a nuclear bomb, a thermonuke, you've got to set off an atom bomb first to create the heat to cause the fusion. Um, so there's definitive steps in any system. And this is what I've told myself I've been researching for decades, is systems. That's actually what I look at in natural, man-made, whatever. Because they are all constructed around the hermetic thing we talked about earlier, by definition. Um, The system that I said years ago has to come down because it has to mathematically. Everyone's agreeing now, that's definitely the case. But I still get, well, when's it coming down there? And my response is still, look around you. Have you not seen what's been going on around, you know, all the revolutions triggered by the banking collapse and so on? But the key triggers have been pulled just in the last few months. Um, so now I see the end game, of literally this year, into next year. I can't see it going beyond that. It is technically possible, all they've got to do is keep pumping the system. But no one can afford to do that now. There's only one body left on earth that can do that next time it goes, and that's the IMF. And they can and will issue a global currency as the others collapse. Um, which would kind of make me right, because I always said, it will come on the collapse of the euro. The euro is designed to collapse, giving a reason for a global currency. Because the only other plan would be to bring in regional currencies like the euro and like the others that we've been told they are working on, and then run with that for 30 years before implementing a global one. They're not going to wait that long. Um, it's coming, and it can only come through a collapse of the dollar and the other currencies. Uh, so it, it, are we are we talking because we're coming to the end of the interview now? For so mm -hmm. are, are we talking me without putting fear porn out there to to everybody viewing this? It's it, when that happens. Is this a major collapse for everyone? Are they going to put the fear into everyone? Is it going to knock an effect from that that everyone will go yes, please single currency, sign me up here. All oh, my debts are gone and we're off it good again. I don't well, think you get a choice. There'll be no more signing up for things after this. You'll be told what's going to happen and that'll be the end of it. Um, would, would that not in turn then, to, again, to people like ourselves and people, like you said, that this, this revolution that started, they go, oh, no, what's this now? A, hmm. a one world currency, hang on a minute, and more of a backlash for the people, maybe. Yeah. Um, the, the point is, in an economic collapse, anything can and will happen. But the, once... Once the dollar really tumbles, and, and it, it, it is, and will, um, especially after events in the last few weeks with Russia and China trading their gas supplies in gold and other currency, they've effectively told America you're no longer the reserve currency. In fact, they've said it in their parliament, um, which means it is no longer the reserve currency, and that is 70% of its value as, as a broad guess. The best would be 60%. So you get a 60% down valuation of the dollar. Oh, we have serious, serious issues now. Everything collapses. So your money becomes worth... All these things we've talked about, it could be a potential...
bloody nightmare. But they are the masters of chaos and they will step in and put it right. Uh, they're right. But it's at that point where I, I've said for years, I'll, I'll deem myself to be at war against them there. Um, and I'll work out then what that means. Well, it's, it's the old adage of when America sneezes, you know, the rest of the world catches yeah. cut. I, I, again, I mean, this is what's going to happen. We, we've got the BRICS nations trying to set up a, a new financial system that would have been far better if we could have had that. BRICS being Brazil, and Russia, and Italy, and China, mm -hmm. etc. Um, so that's going on too. But China has to collapse. You know, China's such a big bubble. It's come, it, every one in finance knows China's coming down. Um, just a matter of when. So that would trigger it too. We now have, we're, we're waiting for a trigger event. And that will be staged if there isn't a natural one. But when it happens, it, it'll be, all be so quick and confusion. It's new territory. Um, food stamps. What, whatever. It's, this isn't fear porn, this is what happens. Martial law. Yeah, it's what happens. And this was always the plan. And they will kind of take over. Um, they already have. They're just kind of weeding out the, uh, the trouble at the minute. So, yeah, it's coming. And I've said this for years, but that's why I'm making a point now. saying, yeah, these are the times. It's now. Uh, to which you always get, well, when exactly? Uh, and that just shows such a misunderstanding of finance anyway, that anyone who does that can only ever be lucky to make a guess. People are controlling this. They're going to drag it out as long as they can and, and let it flop when they're ready to deal with the consequences. So it can't go on more than a few months to the next year without collapsing. Should I say? without the IMF standing in and propping it up again, but that's the key moment. Mm -hmm. yeah? When they save our global economy, that's the big scam that they're going to pull on everybody with a global currency, because you won't have a choice. You won't be saying, we don't want a global currency. They'll be saying, well, you ain't got a currency. You can use ours. It has a value. Yours hasn't. So that's exactly what will happen, uh, I think. And if not, big deal, the battle goes on because we still need to issue our currency we still need to get rid of the elite rulers whether they are of an extraterrestrial bloodline or whether they are of an ancient earth bloodline, it makes no, never mind, because they're criminals mm -hmm. and really mm -hmm. great What is your hope then, now what would you expressing everything that you just put forward now, what do you kind of wish for or hope in the people or well I, I hope that <laughs> we get to issue our own currency etc but even that you know if, if we do end up in another war and everything's hidden behind that um, who can change that the, you know the, we're caught up in world history mm -hmm. which again is part of my motivation for saying before we're buried in that We've got to make a stand. Does that mean we stand and fight? No, because we'll get crushed. We make a stand, a visual stand. And if we can, from my perspective, having studied their occult laws for decades now and done my own stuff, I know that what they're doing has a counter spell, for want of a better word. All we have to do is do that counter spell. And then the situation will change. We can then go from there. Um, and the counter spell is to hold the mirror up to them and ask them the question. If they're doing this, we simply have to ask them why they're doing this. Phrase that question in the hermetic way. And it'll be like a tin opener. They don't need to answer. The public will hear the question and hear the answer, even though there isn't one. But that's not really the point, because that would still won't incite the public to stand up and say, we want our currency issue debt free, because they still actually won't get it, like 99% of the people in the truth movement who are out there pushing for it. They still don't, they don't actually understand it. 
That's because people are still confused about money. And that's no surprise because it's the greatest magic trick ever. Mm -hmm. It's pure magic. It's like music. Money and music are kind of um, two different songs but the same substance. And the answer is not to get rid of money. It's to take greed out of money. And I think that's what Assyria Debt Free does in not too long a time. It also stops the accumulation of wealth beyond reasonable means. Um, but the other thing I'd call for at that moment, assuming I had the chance to call for it, would be for our military to come back, defend these shores, look after these islands, because that's their job. And we're now going to look after ourselves. We can put this country right. Um, we really, we, I honestly believe we could. A seven-year plan would have this country back to being prosperous and wealthy, but meaning not just in a monetary way, but proper wealth, the people's wealth. Um, if we were lucky enough to generate that sort of wealth for everybody, and I mean everybody, then the next thing that happens is the elite bully is just going to come along and steal it off us anyway. So we need to take care of these people. And I don't know about others, I am just speaking for myself, but ultimately, even though they could take me out in the first second, ultimately I would go to war, physical war against these people. I do mean that. I'm not a violent person. In fact, I've never hit anyone, except in self-defense. Um, so, why would I do that? Well, because it's necessary. You see, part of the indoctrination that's been going on is to convince everybody that love is all, peace is, that you can't win peace with a violent act, etc. And there's a good philosophy in there which we all get, yeah? But it's a philosophy, it, it's a four dimensional philosophy to me. It's not real here. It's not real at all. It's an excuse system for weak-minded liberal mindsets. Um, the kind of person who would stand by and allow themselves to be beaten up rather than hit back. Uh, when, if you hit back, it could stop it. Or to step in and help someone else who's being beaten up. Everyone ignores these things. <coughs> Everyone in this truth movement says, yeah, we're going to resist, we're going to fight. Well, if fighting means just chanting and holding banners and not learning your stuff anyway, then we're going to go nowhere. They set this up, we've fallen into it, we need to step out and create a resistance movement in full public view, not to resist the government in everything it does, but in one thing, and we will resist it. And if ultimately the government doesn't listen, if ultimately that requires us to destroy every bank branch, not that we'll need to because they're moving out of them if you haven't noticed, mm -hmm. um, we won't. We need to affect these people and we need to do it big time. And we can do it entirely non-violently. We can actually do it in a way that could be so, f so hilarious. It really could. Because with this kind of operation I'm talking about, there's always the ironic hilarity um, and sometimes that can come back on you you know you've got to be prepared for it I think we can take them on destroy them issue our currency ourselves have a damn good laugh doing it remove the paedophile rings remove the Kabbalists entirely um, and I, I think there's enough good Kabbalists for want of a better word out there who uh, could join together overnight and take these people on. You see, then that their idea of Kabbalistic magic is is like Jack and Ori stuff. Um, it's like being taught whatever the real story of Jesus was. It's like being taught the Toy Story that the church actually dishes out. They're working on a Toy Story. If true occultists were to take them on they would not stand a chance and that's the reality and they know that so anyone else out there listening to this who actually knows what I'm talking about then please get in touch 
because we can take these people out without even moving from our home as if we want to, ultimately using natural law, but that takes training, uh, effort, people working together, knowledge, and you know, you're moving into the realms there of, of using magic, and that, that's really not what it's about. We need to materialize magic in full public view. And the way that's done throughout history by every, call on what you will, magician, certainly not Kabbalists, this has nothing to do with Kabbalah. Um, alchemist, I guess, is the word that's used throughout history. It's infallible insofar as it will create the change. What's not infallible is what change it will create. We need to create a change with, you know, with our elites. We need to take them out, preferably before a whole gang of yobs with sticks and guns and knives and whatever decide to go and take the elites on themselves. Because that ultimately will happen too. Mm -hmm. Certainly after an economic collapse, I wouldn't like to be living in a two million pound house in its own grounds when the city near me has collapsed and people are out on the streets and you know, no food, no food supplies, etc. I wouldn't want to be in the position that a lot of rich people in this country are going to be in in the next couple of years. If I were them, I would start coming to us and working with us, if you see what I mean. And by us I mean those in this movement who, well, who need to take this on. Um, these people won't respond to it, but if they could, it would be great. I'd ask our policemen to come and talk to us. Yeah, You see, what is this truth movement? We could be talking to the police. I've, I've done it in a local thing here. Um, the army I've talked about, people need to pull in when this happens. And if you could take over this country tomorrow and be Prime Minister, I'd be begging you, Paul, get the army back, get the police doing their job, get them off of all rubbish, yeah, the contractual law, so it, they should be there to look after the people. Um, and if they're not willing to, if they don't want to stand by the people, then things are going to change because they have to live here, you know, they have to live here. Uh, just like the policeman who got shot by Raoul Moat, just lives, um, if you ever, or lived a few hundred yards that way, until they killed him in his house. Um, but that's because he was shagging the chief constable and probably knew some of the 7-7 seven seven secrets as well because he was shagging the Crown's chief witness for that too. So what a strange coincidence that the policeman that was doing that gets shot. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Never mind. He lived here. This place was in a state of terror for many days. The place was in military shutdown. Police everywhere. It was shocking. So I'll stop wittering. I know it's coming to an end. That's what we need to do. Issue the currency and get our bloody military and our bloody police to start working for the people. And if they can't, be prepared to take the people on. Yeah? Ultimately, that's what it's going to come to. But this battle against the banks or the banksters must take place. It really must. Just like the head of the Bank of England said a century ago, it's a battle that must take place sometime. So I want to bring it about in almost a light-hearted way, but it, yes, it's occult esotericism, it's common sense, it's logic, it's all things combined, and it's a simple act for one day for anyone who says they want to make a difference to stand up and do it. If your excuse is, I can't make it, I'm working that day, then your motivation is pathetic. Yeah, Some revolutionary you would call yourself. If you can't make it because of this or that, some revolution this is going to be. One day, just one day, everybody who's got a mouth and has been using it for the last few years, stand up and just be counted. You wouldn't even have to use your mouth. Even if it's raining. Even if it's raining. <laughs> we'll try and time it for a summer's day. Huh? <laughs> no, but this is kind of the point. It's turned into a, 
an activist circle. Everyone's into activism when in fact it's inactivism. Yeah. Yeah. And it's allowing them to vent their frustrations and their you know, whatever, which you have to do as a ruling elite. You must let people vent their frustrations and give them something to take it out on. So you go away and play with that lot. Meanwhile, they just get on doing what they're going to do. One day, we've got to challenge them. And if others won't do it in this country, I'll bloody do it. And it'll get missed, yeah? It'll get missed. But it won't. That's the point, because I'll go and do it and I'll cause such a damn scene doing it that it will get seen, but it will lose all of its energy if people aren't there. If the people are there, we could literally say nothing. There's nothing to say. We could even print the question in advance. You don't need to go to war over this. We can take them out. And if you haven't read anyone who, who's listening to this, The Art of War, Please go do it, because this is what our leadership use against us. And it even defines in there the way to take them out and down. Um, and I think we have to do it. Brilliant. Well, you've been absolutely fantastic. Thanks for your time, mate. Brilliant. Thank you. How the fuck did you put a title to that? <laughs> this is what I mean. I was just thinking, <laughs> I'd say, head fuckery the fall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>